So, Alav, uh, we were talking about your days in journalism. Yeah, yeah. And how you got started. Right. Where does the story begin? Yeah, it starts somewhere. If I don't um, don't remember exactly, it was so many decades ago, but around 81. After 81 or 82, I think it was 82, after I finished my MSc in Geology okay. from Xavier's College, I said I got a first class in my BSc and I slightly missed a first class in my MSc. Okay. I got 58%. Wow. So I was thinking of entering the GSI, Geological Survey of India, whatever. But journalism always appealed to me because, you know, you love to study humanity and the interactions between various people. And, uh, you know, there was an ad in the free press. So I sent in my bio data and I was called for an interview. And the guy who interviewed me were two guys. I remember one, this gentleman called S.K. Krishnamurthy. S.K.M. used to call him. Okay. I think he was very he was very well known in journalism because he had come from the Express, Indian Express. I see. And he was the guy who interviewed me. I remember when I was called for the interview and he asked me a question which amongst me. He says, let's see, somebody tells you the chief minister is corrupt. Are you going to publish it? So I said, no. He said, why not? Huh. So I said, verification. He said, well, you know that. How do you verify? I said, by contacting the chief minister's opponents. He said, how will you do that? I give him an explanation. And he asked me about 10 to 15 other questions. Along with him, there was another guy called Venu Gopal. Yeah. V. Venu Gopal. He was the editor of uh, Free Press News Service. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. two or three days later, I got the call letter for, to join them. And when I joined them, uh, the salary at the time was only 600 rupees. I see. Uh, but I found it okay. I joined them. And... Um, I had a gala time over there. Hmm. Uh, I was for a short time on the desk reporting. Yeah. Uh, there was stalwarts at that time and those were really great days. Like whom? Like uh, um, S.K. Krishnamurthy, V. Venugopal, then A.C. Menon and there was a guy called P.R.K. Menon and there was a guy called Thomas and another fellow called Thomas Rocha. I see. Thomas Rocha was the chief photographer. I remember he was uh, uh, a bit hefty and uh, very, very dark skinned, yeah. always with his camera slung over his shoulders and very slow ambling kind of a walk. I see. And he'd come to office at about uh, five, six o'clock or so. And there were these two guys called, one was A.C. Menon. He was a Malayali, yeah. a very thin scarecrow sort of a guy with sunken cheekbones. I see. And uh, he would head one shift. And the other guy was another guy called Thomas. I he was see. a jovial guy and used to always tease and pull the legs of this A.C. Menon. I see. Southeast were very good at their language and efficient also, no? And efficient also. And, um, well, this PR came in, I remember. And I was uh, uh, witness to a lot of things. For example, when I was in the free press, there was another newspaper called The Daily, which yeah, I joined. I remember, I remember. 1980, I founded. Yeah, yeah, right. By Lucy Granger. And there was, uh, there was a guy called, uh, uh, I forget his name, the news editor there. He was a very unpopular guy. Because of that, the whole team walked out and joined the free press. I see. Um, Ram Kumar and there was this other guy I mean he was allegedly he, was, uh, he self-professed gay yeah. Ashok Rao Kavi Ashok Rao Kavi <laughs> Ashok Rao Kavi Ram Kumar and uh, four, five, six other names so they were in the reporting when I was there they joined and um, uh, <laughs> I remember one incident I don't know if I should mention the names the names come to my mind yeah. like they used to keep you know ribbing Ashok Rao Kavi uh, he was self-professed gay nothing wrong in that that's his uh, yeah. Preference. There was a guy called Sarmista Ray. And on one occasion, I mean, when I came to the office, there was a human guy or something. Somebody was red faced. That's what happened. So I was told that he made a pass at us. So I was like, how can this happen? Because he's, yeah. he's self professed gay. I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah. So, so, so he's saying, you know, he wanted to show, I don't know what he wanted to show. And she was a very nice, she was a Bengali girl, I remember. So I a very good journalist, very good reporter. Many of these names are familiar because of bylines and bylines all that. Bylines and all that. Ashok Rao Kavi and yeah, all that. And he was uh, quite a good journalist. He came to Goa in the language agitation, wrote some very uh, critical pieces and insightful also. Absolutely. But it's the same chap. So he was there, then he became the chief reporter after Deepak Yogi. When I was there, there was a chief reporter. I, then uh, I was under him. Then he went, there was this... Uh, uh, Friction in the daily, and the whole team. I told you, the whole team came and joined. I see. And Deepak Nyogi, if I'm not mistaken, was the chief reporter. And then Ashok Rao Kavi, the chief reporter. That's when that thing took place with Sir Mister Ray, and uh, got a lot of laughs there. And uh, then after that, uh, I went to the Free Press Journal Indoor Edition. I was in first on the desk, and I went to reporting, and then in went, Indoor. Indoor, yeah. I see. Free Press Journal Indoor, indoor Edition. Uh, I was there transferred. I was there for. We were living in the. 
resident editor's bungalow. Okay. You know, part of it was he used to occupy another half. Uh, we used to occupy I and some other guys like. So those guys in in Indore didn't have a good command of the English language, and we guys from Bombay, three of us, I remember from Bombay, I mean, our language was much much better than okay. them. And well, uh, I was on the desk again for some short time there, and then you know I didn't like much the, the Indore kind of a thing because Hindi and things like Hindi was okay, but uh, small city, small city. So I came back and I applied to the Times. Unfortunately, I they were not letting giving me my leave in Indore, and by the time I came the Test in the interview had got over oh, in Times of India, but uh, I got a job in the Daily. Okay, mm. and over there, the same guy, this news editor, who was unpopular, was responsible for the team walking out from the Daily and joining yeah. the free press. He was there. He was a funny sort of a chap, like a very, very, uh, of course, dedicated in his work, but very egotistical guy. And there were some other Catholic guys over there. Okay, I mean, uh, he was sort of a whole and soul. Yeah, would brook no interference, and he was very, very unpopular. Uh, on one occasion, there was a girl who was a reporter or something, and he used to harass her or something. So she slapped him and ran out. I see. Just slapped him in the whole newsroom <laughs> and ran out. Uh, his name comes to what's his name? Uh, Malali chap only news and stuff. The name just eludes me. Okay. So many decades back, it was in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, Naya. Now it comes back. P N B Bishwanathan Naya. I see. P N B Naya. Because he told me that he uh, converted to Catholicism. Right. One of my colleagues, two of my colleagues, one was Freni Maneksha, another one was uh, Ronita Torcato. They were both with uh, they were all together. They gone there and for a short time in the Blitz and came back to the Daily. And this guy was a he was he was very unpopular. Many of these bylines are very familiar because we used to read them. No, we were young, right. impressionable young. college students and right, we used to read them a lot. Absolutely. And one of the persons I remember was that Uma Prabhu. Uh, at that time, she was a reporter over there, and uh, she had just met this Suresh Prabhu, who was at that time a chartered accountant. If I am not mistaken, I can can't vouch say for this. I can't vouch because it's all hearsay. But I was told that she had gone to interview him, and uh, uh, these things happen. I mean, they had romance yeah. and fell in love and things like that, and then they got married. Okay. So if I am not mistaken, it was around the eighties. Eighty three, two thousand ninety four, something like that. But she had joined. She was. She had already married him. I was going to marry him or things like that. Okay. So she was also there. And from the Daily, I went to the Express. I was also there for a short time. And from the Indian Express, I was there on the Hari Jai Singh. You know, very nice chap, yeah. very pleasant chap. And from I was there for about a year or so. I'm not don't remember the exact time. And then I joined Midday. Uh, Midday also was a great experience. So you've done a full circuit of all the major papers in Bombay. Absolutely, full circuit of all the major papers in Bombay. From Express, I joined. Midi was just uh, picking up, starting. It had already. Yeah, started. I was there Did again at, at the start. Mo- momentous time when there was a strike because there was a whole team who walked out and started the afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, there was uh, busy B and all that. Absolutely busy B. Khalidan Sari was the editor. Yeah. And uh, uh, there was some friction between him, busy B, and Khalidan Sari. And he walked out with the whole team, yeah. which included Carol Andrade. Yeah. And Archie, there was a guy called Archie, Sabas Joseph, and the full team. It was supposed to be a very good team. So they walked out and they started the afternoon because I was there on the very first day. The afternoon was launched. I see. With a big front page ad which said, "Forget your midday meal and enjoy your afternoon tiffin." <laughs> and it was priced at just fifty paisa. I see. Just you can't unbelievable. And I was very much there when the afternoon was launched, and we were deadly rivals because Khalid Ansari couldn't stand. He couldn't stand busy bee, and he just um, he had come out with the anniversary issue, and he didn't want any mention of busy bee or any member of the team over there. Nineteen eighty. Uh, when was this now? I three eighty four, eighty two, something like that. Eighty four, eighty five, eighty four, eighty five. Because before that, I already finished the circuit of these papers. Yeah. Eighty to nineteen eighty, eighty two to nineteen eighty five. I think it was eighty five. Eighty okay. five. When okay. the afternoon was launched. Okay. And uh, that was you know, and then. Uh, that's where Noshirwan Vakil joined also, and your group of friends, Noshirwan Nofi, he was used to call him. He joined. He joined under this guy called Javed Akhtar, an Ayaz man. At the time, I was doing my LLB, yeah. Because you know, my dad was a lawyer, and uh, what incited me to do my law was a funny incident because I'd filed a story uh-huh. in one of the papers. Was it midday or the daily or something? I don't remember when, but it was a very interesting. Uh, a minister was involved. In some at least murder or something like that, and I went. I met the minister. I took all the versions and I filed the report. 
And ultimately, when it came to the news that or something, he didn't publish that on the story. It was broken by the rival paper. So I asked him, sir, what's the problem? Because you know, the other rival has broken it. He said, no, you know, but we can't publish. I said, why? He said, because there's something called subjudice. I said, what's the meaning of subjudice? He didn't know. He said, there is something called subjudice. So I was totally amused. I see. You being a news editor, I mean, you didn't know the meaning of the word subjudice. And I lost chance of breaking a good story. To, to Just to clarify, I mean, uh, anything which is in the court is not subjudice. No, 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 not at all. So, you want me? Good question. Uh, see, uh, yeah, because I'm a PhD in media law, in fact. I see. So, I wouldn't like to call myself an expert in media law because we're all students. Yeah. But I'm a PhD, so I can clarify, I'm the right person. Subjudice means that civil cases and criminal cases. In criminal case, you call it subjudice when a charge is framed. A person is arrested, that's not subjudice, correct? And they gather evidence. Investigation means collection of evidence. Ultimately, the court frames a charge. Before the charge is framed, they argue for discharge. So if it's discharged, it's not subjudice at all. Yeah. The matter was never subjudice. Once the charge is framed, the accused has to know what he has to meet. He has to just keep his mouth shut and watch it like a movie. Hmm? So once the charge is finished, framed, uh, if it's a summons case, it won't be technical, like yeah. summons case and warrant case. Warrant case are more serious. Summons case are less serious. Like up to three years in summons case, more than that is warrant case. Warrant case like murder, dacoity, rape. Very serious case, warrant cases, the procedure is different. When they frame a charge, they use the words of the section and say that you X, Y, Z are hereby saying that you're charged with so and so section, etc. Then it becomes subjudice. Because now the, the trial case, starts. The full case? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It becomes subjudice because now the trial starts. Uh, I want to clarify this for the benefit of journalists. Even when a matter is subjudice, you're free to publish. Because there is nothing in the Contempt of Courts Act which says you cannot publish. Okay. But you cannot jump the gun. You cannot use up the power of the court. For example, the court is trying Amit Shah, whoever, yeah. for whatever the charge may be. You cannot say Amit Shah is guilty or not guilty or whatever. Because that's the job of the yeah. court. But you can attend the court. You can reproduce the arguments. You can, to a limited extent, you can comment also. Yeah. You can interpret. You can comment. But you can't use up the function of the court. You can't convict or acquit. You can't pass judgment on that. You can't say, no, he's not guilty or guilty. Mm. Because that would amount to contempt of court. That would, I mean, usurping the power of the court. But you are free to publish. Nobody can stop you from publishing. Uh, publish in a restrained way. Uh, talk to both the lawyers. That would be safe. Correct? And there's nothing to stop you from publishing. In fact, all these matters are subjects. Your mining case and all that. It's, uh, right. it's, it's, it's nothing right. to stop you from publishing. About about forty five percent of the matters published in newspapers and discussed in TV all subjects. This is a wrong perception, which uh, which which thinks that once it's in court, you cannot comment anything on it. You cannot report. You cannot, you know, wrong. Absolutely wrong. Yeah. See, uh, court means uh, the person may be arrested. It's not subjects. Correct. Then he applies for bail or he doesn't get bail. Even then, it's not subjects. As I'm repeating myself, just when the charge is framed, in a criminal case, in a civil case, issues are framed. What's an issue? It's an assertion and a denial. Like, uh, see, in a criminal case, there's no plaint and there's no written statement. In a civil case, a plaintiff files what is called a plaint in the court. The copy of the plaint with a writ of summons is served on the defendant. And he's given 30 days time, which is extendable by the court, to file his defense. When he files his defense, he will deny. He will say, okay, okay. Uh, and I am the owner of the property and not the plaintiff, blah, blah, blah. So it's called assertion and denial. The plaintiff asserts, the defendant denies. It's called a issue of fact. So there are issues of fact and issues of law. Now, when the issues are framed, then it becomes subjudice in a civil matter. So in criminal matter, when the charges are framed, in a civil matter, when the issues are framed. Even when the issues are framed, the trial starts. You are free to report. Nothing to stop you from reporting. But... Uh, don't use up the functions of the court again. When you say use up the functions of the court, are you suggesting don't comment or don't jump to conclusions? You are free to comment. Comment with temperate language. Okay. Use decent language. Use, uh, I would say, but you know, sophisticated language. Be decent. Be don't uh, mm. be very uh, blunt or the same. Uh, go by the 
documents go by the plaint if it's a civil case go by the written statement talk to the lawyers so when talk this the famous rustam case was under trial in mumbai many decades ago and yeah. uh, the shooting of this uh, army of uh, navy officer yeah yeah that so, jury case yeah jury case mm. and uh, both blitz and current were taking sides on it they were they were con- uh, committing contempt of court in that they were technically committing contempt of court you can see because they were jumping to the conclusion and uh, whipping up public hysteria absolutely on either side building up the hysteria they were technically committing contempt of court what i would also like to say for the benefit of journalists is there are supreme court judgments that contempt of court is the notice for contempt of court is to be issued in very rare circumstances unless there is a calculated attempt okay. on the part of the journalist or okay. the editor intentions are important intentions are important you use very um, blunt language very uh, obstreperous language you know you uh, very so language is not acceptable so even if you comment you comment you 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 are being reasonable you are dissecting the matter and all that there's nothing wrong there's absolutely nothing wrong because if you go to see like that so many like on uh, i won't name but on the tv shows so many of these tv anchors do commit contempt of court <laughs> and the courts don't take any cognizance because they'd be flooded with notices that way what happens is that the courts sometimes they pick on the big papers like the big national dailies like hindustan times or times or express or whatever for minor infringements but they are themselves are violating what the supreme court has said you take contempt in rare cases when there's a calculated attempt to denigrate the power of the court and this journalists should be free to write and they are free to write see we have a modicum of we have certain amount of freedom in india which can't be compared to united states there they have tremendous freedom there but we do have some freedom uh, i'll give one illustration for example in the united states we have that new york times sullivan case where it was laid down that in a defamation case even if a journalist publishes something defamatory which is wrong and false you can't a public figure can't succeed unless the journalist knew what he was publishing was false and still went ahead and published it so that's what is called as actual malice i see mm. so that means the del- the journalist uh, not recklessly but maliciously published what he knew was false so it's next to impossible to win a defamation case in the united states that's why moraji they said didn't succeed right you remember that simon hush you know yes simon hush he didn't succeed so it is next to impossible that's called the uh, that's what we call real press freedom united states i'm not an admirer of usa but that's what we uh, actually should be uh, incorporating like that in our press see journalists are by and large decent uh, nice people and uh, you know intellectual people also like lawyers and we should give them leeway to expose corruption because if you threaten them with defamation suits and contempt of court and what not they won't be free to publish uh, they won't be free to expose corruption so that's what i what went into in my phd thesis that was you know i told you what incited me was this guys that editor says that there's something called contempt of court you know there's something called sorry sub judice recently just about uh, a week back you know my own personal matters you don't want to go into where uh, some property was mine was uh, the same and all that the police the deputy sp of police i won't pinpoint i won't have uh, published his name in one of my columns uh, he says i asked under rti for the copy of some documents because he has applied for an a summary case a summary means to close the matter when i applied for the documents he turns around and tells me it is sub judice it's what do you mean by the term sub judice you applied for a summary and how can it be sub judice so i said no no this sir you don't teach me and this and that and very rude so i said fine No, no, you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer outside, but no. And no, I said, just want to ask. I mean, what do you mean by what I just said? I'm a student. So, what is the meaning of subjudice? He had no reply. Now, this is the quality of people who reach the ranks of deputy SP of police. Who, I'm sorry to say, don't know the meaning of a simple term like subjudice. And uh, people reach top positions, and they stymie, they block free flow of information. Now, in a democracy, information flow is the rule. Transparency is the rule. and uh, blocking information should be the exception only in two or three cases if this national security okay like uh, some india pakistan something some indian navy base is here and they are doing some research on nuclear bombs or whatever we are not concerned with it okay don't we don't uh, not interested in that information because national security is paramount kashmir or whatever uh for example in trade secrets like trade secrets or sexual impropriety like uh, husband and wife something like um, whatever it is they own allegations and counter some sexual impropriety whatever it is they want to 
there the court can uh, declare a matter in camera so journalists are not really concerned it's uh, between the two of them but everything else should be in the public domain what is important here is when a matter is heard in court or on the floor of the legislative assembly it is open to all unlike a legislative assembly like in assembly they can expunge proceedings then a journalist can't really report without yeah. infringing yeah. then they'll issue a notice and what not in a court they can't do that okay but the journalist if he's present in court he takes on his notes and he's free to publish even after the charges are framed or even after the issues are framed that's very important you are free to publish mm. you are present in the court everything now there are cases over here where judges the most important case is this um, matter this amicha that uh, case was transferred to bombay and this judge uh, when the lawyers for the accused persons they put up an application saying that they say this the lives of them these um, are endangered and all that he saying yes he asked the other he asked the prosecution what have you to say and this is the application so i am barring the press from reporting this is illegal this is not only a, this is a gross violation of article 191 total gross violation uh with respect and with the deference i would like to say my humble submission is that the judge seems to be um i would say not aware of the constitutional rights of journalists because a journalist is like any other citizen he has a right to enter the court and he has a right to report so you can't uh, allow the journalist to enter the court and say don't publish if you want to prevent the journalist from reporting declare it in camera that is the only remedy available in a court of law declare it in camera then you won't be allowed to uh, you know publish it the best example i can give you is um, can i mention this for example like uh, the bill made by shiv sena supreme court bal takre uh, which was challenged by uh, the other brother you know there was a dispute between udhav takre and his other brother so when the matter came up in the high court bombay high court before justice gautam patel very sophisticated judge uh, he was cross examined udhav's uh, elder brother jaydev takre so when he was cross examined he said i want to declare something and he made a statement which stunned the court room it was absolutely stunning i don't remember the statement was reported yeah. on the front page of all the papers so gautam patel said stop uh, i'm declaring it in camera and he took the session afternoon session in camera that's fine but when a matter is in open court a judge like this gentleman forget his name who, prevent, who stopped the press from reporting and that too it's a it's a, it's a very it's a it's a sensitive matter matter pertaining to those uh, riots in which uh, amicha was allegedly know this swarabuddin fake encounter case this is a matter of great public interest swarabuddin uh, case and subsequently the loya case okay the swarabuddin case was transferred to bombay because it was the supreme court felt that justice couldn't be done in gujarat now after it was transferred to bombay this uh, learned judge has passed this order saying that uh, the press uh, is free the reporters are free to enter the court room but they are not free to publish which is absurd luckily for the press the uh, journalist like sidat bachia the editor of the wire and some other journalists they filed a repetition in the bombay high court challenging it and uh, justice mohite dere okay she struck down the judgment saying it's a violation of article 19 mane it's a very very good judgment and a very very well reasoned judgment very uh, she appealed the freedom of the press very, very interesting it's nice to go Hear into this. this long detour Sorry, uh, so, so, which is sorry. which is very important to understand, you know. I mean, especially for people interested in this issue. Yeah. And uh, we will soon go back in the next section to your story in journalism. Right, right. But I think these points are absolutely important, and it's uh, important to have it down there, especially you know tomorrow if someone is wanting to understand more about this issue. And no I'm sure, person. I'm sure, Allah, you are one of the very few uh, journalists who has done your PhD, not just your LLM. uh on the law on the media, media and law. the law you must be probably one of the only ones in the country uh i think i am the only one because when you're writing a phd thesis you choose a topic you can't choose a topic which has been done by somebody else okay because you are contributing to the original human yeah see what because i uh, to tell you frankly that I, that editor it said that um, it happened several times and uh, i happened to have a gold medal at my llm examination in mumbai university you were already a llm by that time no 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 at that when that happened that was in 80s you had not time, yet started you no, had not started my llm i don't know no, i you had done your llb i had done my i don't remember yeah it was that i was doing my llb that prompted me to do my llb okay okay so many decades back okay. more than 35 40 years 35 okay. years back okay. don't remember the exact years but among the 80s okay 84 85 somewhere around that the 84 
and he was a senior editor and the story was broken and i said <laughs> And so so we, we'll, we'll come back to that. So but sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, no, not at all. Sir. But very important, important. Thanks for sharing this with mm -hmm. us. I'd like to go back to your story of your days in journalism in the next section. Yeah. Great, great.